So, teenage love story, lover commits suicide, protagonist loses competition to antagonist and gets outed, then protagonist accidentally gets killed. Sounds like a typical gay film viewing experience here at Gayflix Reviews. Hello everybody, I'm Dylan and today we're going to take a look at 154, a French film with English subtitles from Quebec, Canada. It was directed by Yann Englund, produced by Diane Englund and Denise Robert. Production company is Cinemaginaire Inc. and distributed by La Film Seville. 154 centers around Tim, played by Antoine Olivier Pilon, a 16-year-old somewhat shy high school student. He's in a secret relationship with Francis, played by Robert Naylor. We don't know how these two met or how their relationship started, it's just established that they're seeing each other in secret. Both get bullied by various students, but in particular by Jeff, played by Lou Pascal Tremblay. And good god this guy. Do you guys remember Martin from Love, Simon? Well, if you couldn't stand Martin, then you better brace yourself for this jerk because I don't think you're ready. Anyway, Tim's boyfriend Francis ends up outing himself in the cafeteria scene and Tim gay panics and denies knowing this fact and therefore starts to ignore Francis. Francis is double bullied after this coming out scene and tragically commits suicide not long after, with Tim witnessing this. Tim is grieving but is still in the closet. He still gets picked on by Jeff. I don't know why Tim doesn't just punch this jerk. We also learned that Jeff is a runner, with a record time of uh, 1 minute and 54 seconds to beat, which is where the title of the film comes from. We learned that Tim used to run as well when he was around 11 or 12, but stopped after his mom passed, so Tim lives by himself with his father. He also gets inspired to join the running team and try to beat Jeff, whether as a means of revenge or to get some type of moral victory over Jeff. His coach believes in his potential and eventually convinces Tim's dad and Tim himself to give it a try. So, for a bit it turns into a sport competition movie. Jeff's spot is threatened and will do anything to preserve his spot. But, one night at a party, Jeff catches Tim in an intimate moment with a guy and films it, and thus the blackmail begins. He wants Tim to drop out of the race and blackmails him with this video. Tim initially tries to quit, but eventually decides not to. So, okay, we seem to have a good setup for some good drama here, and hopefully a good payoff? I'll reveal what happens in the spoiler section later in this video. So the overarching theme for this film is bullying and blackmail, and boy does this film work hard to drive this point home. There's a point where we just go beyond bullying and go into flat out abuse territory. The antagonist of the film, Jeff, is pretty relentless. I've had bullies in school, which most of us probably have, but good god even they took a day off. Jeff's bullying eventually causes Francis' suicide. But that's not even enough, he even taunts Tim about his boyfriend's suicide. Good god who peed in this guy's cornflakes. I just want to claw this jerk's eyes out. I think he'd be able to cause Darth Vader to impale himself with his own lightsaber. Like seriously, where the hell did this guy come from? A secondary theme is competition running. So, in spite of the depressing nature of this film, I thought the film was going in a positive direction with the rivalry going into a competition. I mean, it's a good idea, it's a composed, non-violent way for Tim to stick it to Jeff, dethrone the self-appointed king, but again, I'll talk about it more in the spoiler section. Finally, we have the theme of tragedy, because, you know, we can't have any levity whatsoever. Alright, so I'll go into the spoilers right now. If you want to see this film but don't want to get spoiled, then stop the video now or skip to the time shown on screen. Ready? Alright. So, as I mentioned, the race culminates in a battle for time between Tim and Jeff. Jeff has pulled out all the stops to win this race and pretty much bullied Tim out of existence. You'd think this film was building up to a good showdown between hero and villain, like Rocky or the Karate Kid. You know, an underdog sticking it to his rival. But nope. Jeff had been blackmailing Tim with a video and carries out his threat during the race. Tim realizes what is happening while running and he slows down, either out of shock or by submitting to Jeff's demands. So basically he loses the race to his tormenting rival. I don't think anybody wanted or expected this outcome. I mean all that build up for nothing. And this isn't where things end by the way, it gets much worse. 
So Tim is outed out in dramatic fashion, with a private sex video going viral while he's still in the race with a bunch of spectators. He loses the race, not to mention all his dignity and pride. Afterwards he gets bullied even harder. He eventually gets fed up with everything and decides to make homemade bombs and stash them at the school dance, which is in effect Jeff's winning celebration. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that during this film Tim makes a friend with this girl named Jennifer. I would almost have shipped her with Tim, if Tim hadn't been gay of course, but in the end she wasn't able to contribute much to this orgy of despair of a film. When Tim sees her go into the school, he has a change of heart and decides to go back into the school to disarm the bombs. He screams and warns everybody, and while trying to get rid of one of his bombs, it blows up, killing our protagonist in the process. I think they should have made Tim at least win the race, then Jeff carries out his threat of exposing the video. Tim is outed and has to deal with the aftermath, but at least he would have that one victory over Jeff, winning the race. But no, this film has decided to take the most depressing route possible. Tim now has a double dose of egg in his face. <sighs> Talk about squashing your protagonist. So teenage love story, lover commits suicide, protagonist loses competition to antagonist and gets outed, then protagonist accidentally gets killed. Sounds like a typical gay film viewing experience here at Gayflix Reviews. <laughs> Good god is this film depressing. My biggest problem with 154 is that it gives our protagonist nothing. Just nothing. He gets pounded into the ground and pounded into the ground without any means of retort or satisfaction. There is a scene where Tim punches Jeff, but it's hardly satisfying for all the crap he's put him through. This is also a situation where we don't get any backstory or anything on the villain. He's just a total ass who's there to make everyone miserable. He never gets any type of comeuppance. I'll give credit to the actor who plays Jeff. I don't know if a character has ever made my hair stand on end like this. So does this film have a message, besides depressing the crap out of its viewers? Well, I guess the message is how far bullying and homophobia can lead to when left unchecked. In my opinion, the film goes too far into making this point. I don't think this onslaught of negativity is realistic, and it squashes any small light of hope that it sometimes sets up. Are there good things I can say about this film? Yes, absolutely. The acting in this film is very good, and even the atmosphere is very well conveyed. You do feel the weight of the school environment, and the bullying feels very real as well. That's one thing I can give this film credit for. It's not like Monster Pies or Sideline Secrets, where the acting sometimes can prevent you from taking the drama too seriously. But here, the drama feels too real. So if it was 154's intention to sadden, shock, and frustrate its audience, they definitely succeeded at 150%. As for ratings, 154 has a score of 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb. It has a rating of 57% on Rotten Tomatoes. The overall reaction to this film is pretty mixed. Some people found it hard hitting and eye opening, other people thought it was too relentlessly depressing. In spite of all my complaints, I still give this film a 7 out of 10. It has great acting and a great sense of realism. The cinematography is a bit bleak, but it completely matches the tone of the film. If you like super dark material, you'll probably like this film. Some people love getting their hearts ripped out of their chests, but otherwise I probably wouldn't recommend this film for a first date. There's just no relief here, it goes too far in the direction it's going. There's a couple of different directions this film could have gone, which I think could have made it better. But it is what it is. So have you seen 154? What did you think about it? Feel free to send me a comment, like, subscribe, add me to Facebook, and I'll hopefully see you for the next review.